This week on Hip Hop Now Podcast, we do a quick Grammys recap. Jay-Z is working on a new album, and what I think about this whole Cameron and Jim Jones situation. Read these headlines. This album must be gone. 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 What up, y'all? I'm your host, Vegas, and welcome to Hip Hop Now Podcast, a podcast designed to catch you up on all things hip-hop music and culture that happen throughout the week. Please know that this podcast is available on iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, keep it going, Podbean, and (laughs) SoundCloud.com slash Hip Hop Politic, where the hop and the politic share the P. Also, Please know this. I have a blog. It's called hiphoppolitik.com. Same situation with the P and the hop and the politic. They share. Not two Ps. They share the P. Uh, but there's a lot of dope hip-hop stuff there, a little information and, um, you know, th- different things, man. Technology that you as a hip-hop fan might want to get down with. Uh, so check it out, hiphoppolitik.com, where the hop and the politic share the P. Um, also, though, if we're going to talk about different things right now as far as promotions go not really going to do much beyond what i'm saying right now on this podcast Uh, but if you the listener enjoy this podcast and you enjoy the content of this podcast maybe you enjoy my perspective because that's the key to this podcast it's not just the news stories it's the perspective behind those news stories um i'm starting a YouTube network, right? It's going to be called uh, B-Roll Network. You can look it up if you can find it. It's not much content there right now because right now it's all about generating content. Uh, I have a couple of people who are going to partner with me and definitely am looking for people who not only have podcasts, but maybe you want to get into the video thing. Hit me up via email at VegasWorld. I-N-C, my bad, that's my Twitter and Instagram, but you can hit me up there too on the DM. Uh, But the email is VegasWorld, the number five, at gmail.com. That's VegasWorld5 at gmail.com. It's not just hip-hop. It's not. It's going to be hip-hop stuff. It's going to be video game stuff. There's going to be, what, there's going to be sports. Um, I definitely hope to get someone on there that can cover technology uh, there should be some fashion situations popping up. So there's a number of things we could we could have there, but it's something that I'm starting because I know a lot of talented people who who pump out content on a regular basis that I think you would enjoy. You know, a little variety because you know, right here we just keep it hip hop. So let's get right into the business. Let's just recap real quick the Grammy Awards. Um. I don't know if I necessarily want to go over the winners, but let me see if I can pull that up right now. First and foremost, let me shout out HipHopDX.com, AllHipHop.com, and uh, HotNewHipHop.com, where I'm getting some of these stories from. Best Rap Album of the Year goes to Chance the Rapper with Coloring Book. If you don't know, that was a mixtape. Best New Artist also goes to Chance the Rapper. Best Rap Performance, Chance the Rapper, No Problem, featuring Lil Wayne and 2 Chains. And really, that's all I'm going to cover right there. But I just said, oh, Chance the Rapper. There were other categories. You could definitely check those out online. I'm pretty sure they're available. But the thing is, and, you know, some people, they they know who won. Uh, But the thing is that I, I ran across on the Internet's is the fact that a lot of people, uh, a lot of hip hop fans were a little upset at Chance the Rapper, um, not only winning some of these uh, trophies, but the basically winning three of them. Why? I don't know. I think, I think it's two, it's two different things right now. There's one thing, right? That is completely understandable. 
Some people just don't like his music. I definitely get that. I would never debate anyone's personal taste or opinion on music. Um, but I will say this in regards to at least the album, I think is well deserved only because I had it in my top five of 2016. And it was basically the best album to me. Um, now, again, yeah, it's not the most rapidly rap album ever. And I never got a point that they were trying to push that particular agenda. Because when you tune in on the radio, you're not hearing Chance the Rapper as much as you're hearing uh, Lil Yachty. You're just not. You know what I'm saying? Or 21 Savage or any one of the, the trap mumble rappers that you could think of. Yes, that's your name now. I'm sorry. It just it sticks. It's it's dope. It sticks. I'm sorry. Uh, but not all mumble rap is bad. Let me just say that. But the thing is, because it's a flow. It's, it's just a flow. But when you're not saying, let me not get into it. But the thing is, is that with Chance the Rapper, like maybe he shouldn't have won the single of the year. I kind of disagree with that. I think they should have gave that one to to Remy Ma and Fat Joe all the way up. Because honestly, I know, you know, I'm located in a tri-state area. That's New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, right? Hot 97, Power 105. You know, I'm 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 going to be biased to what I hear when I turn on those radio stations. And all the way up was the soundtrack of the summer including the remix. You couldn't escape it. I don't know how that is for, for other regions. You know, I don't know how that is for Chicago, where uh, Chance the Rapper's from. Maybe it might be different. Maybe that song that won for him was their soundtrack for the summer. I can't say. But I'll just say, you know, what had a, what I could see that had a broader appeal was the, the Fat Joe and Remy Ma record, more than anything. And supposedly Fat Joe uh, took some shots at Chance the Rapper and then he, on Twitter or whatever, and then he denied that he did or whatever it may be. I don't agree with that. I don't co-sign that because at the end of the day, this young man in particular is not your enemy. He's not the most rapidly rap rapper. Yes, he sings and, you know, he, he raps occasionally, but I've heard projects where he raps more than he sings. And no, he's not the best lyricist ever, but the project he put together in Coloring Book is pretty dope. It's excellent, in fact. You know what I'm saying? So maybe you should check that out. I mean, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. But the main thing is, I don't even watch the Grammys, so I don't care who they pick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So let's keep it moving and get right into the business. Farrell Munch, speaking of Grammys, won his first Grammy ever. You didn't know that, hippity hops, did you? Uh, that's what I'm calling the, the super old heads. Super old heads, not just old heads. Uh, but it was on the Miles Davis uh, original motion picture soundtrack. Um, I have that album. That album isn't a hip-hop album. It's a Miles Davis, it's jazz, you know, but a lot of it was repurposed by jazz musicians like uh, Robert Glasper to, um, you know, to fit into not only just the quality of sound, but, you know, just bringing it out a little bit more. But they do have a record on there that features uh, Farrell March called uh, uh, Gone 2015. And it's a pretty dope record. And the fact that the album won a Grammy suggests that Farrell March now has a Grammy. And if you didn't know, Farrell March is the truth. Go look him up. He's released the his last two albums, some of the best al hip hop albums in recent history, and most people don't even know. Most people don't even know, and that's a damn shame. Uh, real quick on my site, hiphoppolitic.com, with a hop in the politics share the p. I um, posted the latest battle rap release video release, so you can watch it on video from URL TV, Smack TV's uh, Born Legacy. Four is New Jersey twerk. Yes, twerk, but like work with a T in front of it versus glue easy. And just a quick recap and what I thought, I think I think the battle was a draw. I think New Jersey twerk 
is the future of battle rap. His flow, his his schemes, his wordplay, his aggression. He looks like Carmelo Anthony, but whatever. Uh, is all is all on point. But I felt like, you know, in this battle and in some of his past battles, that sometimes his bars are just going over people's heads because it it sounds like he's not saying anything. Until you listen and you start connecting the dots and connecting the words and you know, some of it feels like a reach, but some of them some of them lines are really mean. But I thought he took I thought New Jersey twerk took the first round because Glue Easy started out very strong in the first round and then uh he kinda tapered off towards the end. Whereas uh New Jersey twerk was he was crazy throughout the whole first round. Then in the second round this is where crowd reaction kind of kills the buzz because I felt New Jersey twerk verse was fire or his round was fire, but I felt like he was looking for too much crowd reaction. So it took some of the punch out of his words. You know what I'm saying? When you see a guy kind of side eyed in the crowd, when he said stuff kind of takes away from the performance. Whereas uh, Glue Easy had the rebuttals and um, he put together a solid round. So I gave that to Glue Easy. And then in the last round, both of them didn't give their best effort. They had bars. Uh, Glue Easy had hit or miss bars. Some of them were dope. Some of them were just regular gun talk. And then he kind of faded at the end. I guess he forgot something or whatever and just kind of just gave up at the end. Right. And then New Jersey Twerk kind of did the same exact thing. I <laughs> mean, he had some stuff. I think if he would have had a stronger round, I would give it to him two to one. So, Born Legacy 4, New Jersey Twerk versus Glue Easy. I call it a draw, even. Round for round, whatever, whatever, bar for bar. Fife Dog's solo album is to be titled Forever. If you didn't know, Fife was working on a solo album also before he passed away. Now, I'm not even going to front. You know what I'm saying? God rest the dead. I know some people sometimes when somebody's dead, they really don't like to say anything bad, and that's true. And I really don't have anything bad to say about Fife as a human being. But his first solo project did not light the world on fire. It was basically whack to me. It's something I would say regardless. You know, I can't change my opinion, um, you know, about a project at least just because the brother's not here any longer. So I am not that optimistic about a Fife solo. And also, let me just say this, maybe some of it is my internal bias when it comes to certain solo projects that are coming from groups or group members, I should say. I am not the type of dude that likes to uh, hear solo projects from a group I love because I want y'all to make records as a group. I'm just stubborn like that. It's, that's just what it is. So we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see. When When is the album supposed to drop? He has a single featuring Dwayne called uh, Wanna Dance, uh, probably produced by Jay Dilla because Jay Dilla just got beats for days or maybe not. You know, maybe maybe isn't, but I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but the al- oh, <laughs> he does have a song produced <laughs> by Jay Dilla and it's called Nutshell is being and this uh this whole project is supposed to be released I believe sometime in April so we'll keep our eyes open for that I know Fife probably knows or knew I should say what his album did the first time and I, I'm pretty sure he wants to do way better you know that that had to be his wish to to do way better to make a, a impact or I don't know maybe he thought it was dope. Um, Method Man and Red Man's How High Part Two is still in the works. I I don't know why. Uh, I I don't know why. I really liked How High. I felt like How High was um, it's it's in that cult classic area it was very funny um really unexpectedly funny funnier than i thought and it it starts the movie off it's kind of like when when, (laughs) 
All right, uh, you know, spoiler alert, I guess. But the, you know the part where, if you've seen it, where um, Meth and Redman kind of first meet. So I think Redman has a has papers <laughs> to to roll weed, but he don't have no weed. And Method Man has weed, but he doesn't have no papers. So they see that they both need it. So I think Method Man gets in the, uh, I mean, Redman gets in Method Man's car. And I think, Meth, I'm forgetting a lot, but Method Man says something to the effect like, you know, like you want to smoke. And <laughs> Redman gets in the car like, hell yeah, my name's Jamal. That was just extremely funny to me, even though I kind of took a very long time to set it up. Chris Rock calls Rick Ross the greatest rapper alive. Chris Rock's top five does not matter whatsoever because of what he said in the movie Top Five in regards to his top five rappers, which is his opinion. But greatest rapper alive, no, he is not, man. No, he is not. Now, I like Rick Ross' music a lot. A lot. I didn't care when, when he was Officer Ricky. That's when he had his best music out. You know what I'm saying? The Justice League was blessing him. He had that, you know what I'm saying, that ride to music, that get rich music. I, I like Rick Ross's whole persona. So, please, it, it does not matter, uh, matter. Martin Scarelli's Wu-Tang Clan listen event was canceled. He was going to do, like, a, a, a listening event. I believe he said something to that effect when – um. He made the online, I guess, bet that if Donald Trump won the presidency, he would share this uh, Wu-Tang album with us, a.k.a. Well, yeah, I guess you could say a.k.a., but in regards to me, a.k.a., I don't really care. I really don't care. I mean, I don't even know. What I, what I do care about is the Wu-Tang album that's coming that's being overseen or executive produced by Ghostface. I definitely care about that one because I have a feeling it's going to be nuts. Jay-Z's working on a new album, y'all. He's working on a new album, and uh, he's working with the producer, Zaytoven, if you haven't heard of him. Zaytoven reveals that Jay-Z's reactions uh, when he played him beats. Shout out to Hip Hop DX. I don't know if I want to hit play on this. Um, yeah, I don't know if I want to hit play on this at all. But he was working with him ever since, like, November. So, uh, but th there's somebody out there who was like, okay, I don't know who Zaytoven is. Um, but he's a Southern producer. Uh, he's produced for Gucci Mane, Migos, Soldier Boy, and a couple of others. There are a bunch, there's probably a bunch of Jay-Z fans out there who are very afraid. Uh, but Zaytoven had this to say. Then we started to talk about music. He was letting me know what artists he likes. I was asking him who he's feeling in the game. Then it got down to, I got these beats I need you to, to give to you. I heard you were looking for me, Zaytoven. And this is what, this is all, you know, Jay put the word out, basically, that he was looking for a Zaytoven. But here's the reaction of Jay-Z listening to the beats that Zaytoven played for him. Now, that doesn't mean he played beats that were just, you know, catered towards the people he's worked with. Let's not sleep on different producers from different regions. Some of them have range. So you never know. But he said this, and I quote, it's the reaction I always want to get. When we got to the third track, he was like, hold up, play that one again. That's when I knew I got his attention. I knew what he wanted, so I had like 25 beats on CD. He was like, give me all of them. To the dismay of what we know Zaytoven for producing, he says the beats he let Jay-Z hear weren't trap. See? <laughs> so, now just because they weren't trap, doesn't mean that Jay-Z won't touch a trap-like beat, which I think he definitely should because I like the Major Keys joint. I'm not the biggest Future fan who um, Future actually has an album out uh, today. Today's Friday, out today. Um, but at the same time, man, uh, if Jay-Z can make it happen and he can make it sound dope 
or lit or hot or whatever way you want to say it, funky, then so be it. I really enjoyed uh, Magna Carta Holy Grail, except for maybe like the second half. And I had this thing, I'm sorry, I had this thing where there's a way to talk about your family that is still entertaining uh, to or, or compelling. I, I won't say compelling because I think if, if a dude wants to express his love for his wife and his child on record, that's fine. But I think I had this thing with me where I needed to be more than just that because then it feels like this is a personal record that should be exclusive to the, like you should just make it and give it to them. Because I feel like the odd man out sometimes. Um, there are ways to do it where it's dope. Like Nas did Daughters. That was a dope way to do that. Um, but when he did Dance With My Mother, I felt like, you know, I need to give him some time. You know what I'm saying? And that's not a disrespectful thing. It's just that it was so personal that I would always give it an A+, plus, five mics, five stars, whatever, because of, you know, you're creating this music because your mom's passing. You love her. Um, but one of the ways I like for people to put their kids in their rhymes is, and I'll never forget this, is when Prodigy was like, you know, a little blood get on my daughter's nothing she lived. Talking about, you know, being in the shootout with people. I mean, I'm saying that's hard the way he said that. <laughs> so, you know, it's no big deal, but... I feel like, you know, I, I like Jay-Z's last album. I've liked a couple of albums uh, recently from him, like Blueprint uh, 3, even though I haven't listened to it in a long time. Blueprint 3, I kind of liked. Uh, I like this one a lot. I like Watch the Throne. Um, so we'll see We'll see what he comes up with because I think Jay-Z can definitely still rap. He never sounds like he completely lost a step. Sometimes he may get a little in his own shoes and, and hove it out and take long pauses and just say, I'm me. Um, but then there are times where he wants to make a statement and that's when he's at his best. That's when the hunger starts to come out of him. So we'll see what happens um, with what he's doing. I don't believe this dude Zaytoven is doing the entire album. I believe Jay-Z is going to pick what's best out of it and, and use that. And he'll probably have some of the, the usual suspects be dope if he could get another premiere track um even though i feel nah don't get a premiere track if, if premiere can't give you a track that doesn't sound like all of premiere's tracks then um you know no disrespect to premiere definitely a legend but then go get an alchemist joint because alchemist is one of those producers that makes you fit or go get one of them jay dilla joints that's still around uh or new because he still got new stuff but I feel like with Alchemist, he kind of does the premiere sound, but he has more variety. You know what I'm saying? So it it never sounds the same, honestly. Um, so we'll see what this new Jay-Z album sounds like. And lastly, you know, this happened last week. It was happening while I was doing my podcast, but I wanted to see how things played out, and I'm glad I waited. If you don't know, you know, you remember Dipset. You know, Jewel, Santana, Cameron, Jim Jones, the whole Freaky Ziggy, the whole squad. You know what I'm saying? Hell Rao, one of my favorites. Uh, J.R. Ryder. You know, you remember the Dipset days, and then you know they had the whole breaking up and all of that. And then recently, which I did mention last week on my podcast, soundcloud.com slash hiphoppolitic with a hop in the politics share the P. Uh, but I mentioned how Jim Jones signed to Rock Nation, which is Jay-Z's label. And you know the history, or maybe you don't, but they had a history where they wasn't really rocking with Jay-Z at all. Like, honestly, the whole dip set and Cameron signing to Rockefeller was part of the catalyst for Rockefeller being gone and the breakup between, uh, you know, Dame Dash and Jay-Z. So now you have years later, Jim Jones, Signing to Rock Nation. What's going on? So Jim Jones appeared on Funk Master Flex's show and he gave this passionate, you know, emotional 
Um, and, you know, like the crying part, it's not as bad as some people made it seem. You know, it, one tear came out of his eye while he was talking about and rec reminiscing about the things he'd been through with Cameron and how how foul he felt it, uh, the different situations in their situation today and why he chose uh, to go with Rock Nation because he felt like, you know, he needed that. Now, I watched the video. I didn't really see that much wrong with what Jim Jones uh, had to say, but again, sometimes airing it out in the public eye, I don't know. I treat it like sports. You know, keep that in the locker room. Um, if it decides, if it comes out, let it come out after you've already, uh, you know, reconciled with each other. But I watched that, right? You know, I had my opinion, blah, blah, blah. But then Cameron does a three-hour Instagram tell-all of him and Jim Jones' relationship, the the dip set, breakup, just, just mad stuff in there. And while sipping a Pepsi to give him strength, I guess, uh, <laughs> every five seconds. And um, I watch highlights of it because no way in hell was I going to watch three hours of Cameron sipping Pepsi in a, in a in a robe at the table at the dinner table no way not in the dining room nah uh, but I did watch highlights and I found it interesting that their relationship seems to be based off of a lot of emotions you know I'm not no psychologist you know my wife is but I'm not or she's going to be one of y'all too much info but the thing is is I look at Jim Jones as being, you know, this real emotional dude who wears his emotions on his sleeves. He probably cries more than ever. Uh, well, I won't say ever, but I think I did see him crying on Love and Hip Hop. There's nothing wrong with crying, fellas. But he's real emotional. You know what I'm saying? And Cam is just as emotional, but he's the opposite. I won't let them see me cry. I won't let them know how much I really care because is really more so about about being the cool dude, about, you know, who looking cooler in the situation, looking more like the one that's under control when we know it's much deeper than that. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's why the relationship they have or had kind of ended up the way it is because Cam is the type that can't really get over the being cool part to, to just feel sorry. Now, I will say this. He did admit, admit a ton of things that he did that he viewed as being foul. I will give him that. He definitely admitted that. But a lot of times when you give backhand statement after backhand compliment after whatever and you try to downplay somebody, you're, you're trying to take all the strength out of, you know, the, the, the situation, you know what I'm saying, about the – you know, I'm getting I'm getting caught up. Maybe I'm getting a little emotional. Uh, but, you know, it's the thing where it's just stupid. You know, at this at this point in time, it's stupid. It's interesting to, to know and, and find out. And honestly, I don't even think they should give stories away like that for free. Because and I won't say that Cam gave it away for free. Because for him to decide to not go to a radio station but decide to uh, stream live via uh, Instagram, I wonder if he approached Instagram like, yo, I'm about to do this, it's going to do this, it's going to do that. Uh, maybe it's sponsored by Pepsi. He should have been for as many sips as he took. Go watch it, man. Watch it. Like, Cam, you got to drink water, B. I'm not trying to be super health, dude. But the reason why, you know, you your mouth was getting parched while you was talking all that stuff was because you was sipping soda. It, it doesn't really quench your thirst. It does it for a second, and then your mouth get dry. Water, man, it's the sugar. That's one to grow on for y'all. But the thing is, man, don't give that away for free. I'm always thinking business. Do not give that away. Put that in a book. Put that in a documentary. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? Where people, because people wanted to know. I mean, I sat there and watched both. You know what I'm saying? Because it became interesting to know 
these are the things that led up to these brothers breaking up. Um, so, you know, go check it out online. Let me know your thoughts in the comments about this, about the, the battle rap uh, joint that I just talked about earlier in the podcast, everything, the Jay-Z album, everything. Leave your comments in the comment section. Let me know and hit that like button and subscribe button. That's going to do it for me for this week here on Hip Hop Now Podcast. You can follow me on social media at Vegas World INC. If Facebook is your bag, follow on facebook.com slash hip hop pop nope my bad facebook.com slash hip hop right now hit the like button you can see all the stuff that gets shared there including this podcast please know that this podcast is subscribable on any one of your devices whether it's ios on itunes podcast android on google play music or Stitcher Radio, you can use that app, you can use the TuneIn app, or Podbean, or you can come to the home, the base of it all, soundcloud.com slash hiphoppolitik. And until next week, y'all, I am not a critic, I'm a fan. Peace.